Hey, hey youtubers what is going on thank you for stopping by i hope this video finds you well if you're new here my name is jc this is the Kilo redneck diy channel where we do cooking and grilling videos on tuesdays and diy stuff for all types on fridays today we're back at the garage where we're going to make a strut tower brace or a strut tower bar for my 2022 Ford maverick uh i know that Stita makes one but uh you know i'm just not the type of me too type of guy I hang out with a lot of guys who hot rods, uh, you know, race cars and things like that. Nothing sucks more to go to a gathering and, uh, you know, opening your hood and you got the same crap that everybody else has. So uh, I decided to make this a kind of a DIY project. And uh, although I'm going to be using the, my 2022 Ford Maverick as a guinea pig, this is something you can implement on any vehicle uh, with the unibody design. Now, I understand this is not for a lot of people. And if this is one of you, would you please do me a favor click on the title of the channel where you'll find multiple playlists dedicated to food drinks and all the diy stuff okay so i know a lot of people are going to wonder what is a strut bar or strut tower brace and why do i need one well for the most part the suspension of a unibody vehicle looks something like this these are the struts and this is the lower cross member this works perfectly fine while driving straight However, when leaning into a turn or braking while turning, the U-shaped architecture allows for a considerable amount of chassis flex and distortion. The strut tower brace transforms the U-shaped architecture of a unibody design into a box. This makes the vehicle a lot more predictable while turning. Ideally, this is what you want a strut bar to look like. But since the entire front radiator support of the Ford Maverick is plastic, I'm choosing a more simple design. And if you're wondering if the 2022 Ford Maverick needs a strut bar, well, this is 100% dependent on your driving style and what friction modifications you have in store for your Ford Maverick. With that said, my Ford Maverick XL shows signs of both understeering and oversteering at times. What this means is that when you enter into a continuous turn, the vehicle does not want to turn or follow the line you have chosen. Then as you exit the turn, and you accelerate, the rear of the car feels like it wants to come around. This is more noticeable when entering or exiting a highway with either a looping uphill entry ramp or a downhill exit ramp. For this DIY strut tower brace build, I'm choosing easy to find over the counter materials, that being a 1 inch square tubing and a 1 inch flat bar. When it was so said and done, the build cost about $30, but of course, what you buy in materials is going to greatly impact the cost. Not only that, I'm going to use nuts and bolts so that the average person without a welder can replicate this strut bar build. The first thing we need to do is measure the distance between the mounting bolts on the strut towers. We then need to figure out how long to make the end pieces. I'm going with 5 inches, I think that that will suffice for this particular design. After cutting the two pieces, cleaning and rounding the edges on one end, I drilled two quarter inch holes one inch apart and an 8 millimeter hole about half an inch from the end. If you don't have a metric bit, a 5 16 drill bit will do. Now let's see how this fits. As you can see, we need to adjust for the angle of the bolt on the strut tower, but this is not an issue. Find something round, a bolt, a rod, anything, place it at the 2 inch mark just behind the line and execute the bend with the help of a C-clamp. Okay, uh, so this is the original idea uh, for the anchor point. Uh, it's basically a uh, 3 8 uh, spacer. This is thick wall a steel spacer in a uh, M8 by 40 millimeter stainless screw with a flat washer. Uh, obviously, we need to, uh, we need more gap. And um, I could have gone and outsourced uh, a longer spacer, uh, but uh, I have I have some of these uh, uh, connecting uh, nuts uh, in my uh, drawer of straps and that fits perfectly on the M8. Uh, so basically uh, what we'll need is uh, we'll need a longer screw, something like this. And that should fit, uh, that should fit and do the trick as far as raising this up about a half an inch or so. 
So let's give that a try and see where we are and then we'll go from there. With the new spacer in place, we need to measure across the strut tower once again, this time from the bend on one bracket to the next. On my install, this measured 38 and 3 8 and that's how long I cut my crossbar. The next step is drilling it to accept the end pieces. Please pardon me for cheating, I will be using threaded inserts, but please know the regular nuts and even steel rivets will work. I opted for the threaded inserts to save some time because it is getting cloudy and may start rain in a minute now. The holes I drill on the end pieces are exactly 248 thousandths of an inch. That means I have no wiggle room. Therefore, it is best to drill one hole, bolt the bracket in place, and use that as a point of reference for the next one. When it comes to the opposite end, I recommend mounting the strut bar in place and using a clamp to hold the end piece where it needs to be. Proceed to drilling following the same procedure we did earlier. After one last dry fit, we can move on to painting, but this is Florida where the skies go from blue to dark in a matter of minutes, and before you know it, it is raining. Out of pure boredom while it rains outside, I decided to drill some holes on the crossbar for no apparent reason. This is something I don't recommend, or at least consider making smaller holes. The smallest hole saw I have is 3 quarters of an inch, and I think that's a little bit too big. The rain did not stop, so I got to work the next morning by giving the parts a good wipe down with alcohol, a coat of rust inhibiting primer, followed by two coats of exterior white paint. And that, my friends, was a disappointment since it looks grayish next to the truck. The full white is super white, white as snow. I strongly recommend finding a factory color match. A few hours later, we are ready to install the strut bar, but first we need to assemble it. I opted to add additional spacers between the end piece and the crossbar. For this, I'm using 516 nuts and quarter inch washers. With this additional spacing, the bar barely touches the fuel return line, which is something many people have reported having an issue with the Steeda strut bar. I also drilled an additional hole for mounting the zip type holder, holding the vacuum canister in place. With that in place, it is time to install our custom stroke bar. Note that I am not using Loctite, although I do recommend it. That is because this stroke bar is coming right off and getting repainted to match the color of the truck. The camera is not showing it, but trust me, there's a huge difference between the truck and the strut brace. Guys, thank you for watching and stay tuned. There are more full Maverick mods and upgrade videos coming your way.